Right, well, it's time for the Great British Debate this hour, and I'm asking, do you believe that Rishi Sunak can lead his government with integrity? Now, the Prime Minister has been fined after failing to wear a seatbelt in a promotional clip for his levelling up announcement. Uh, and last year, uh, Sunak promised to lead the country with integrity and accountability at every level in his opening speech as Prime Minister. But in his 72 days at the helm, at least it's a few more than Liz Truss, <laughs> former, can he keep his promise? Former Chancellor Nazim Zahawi has paid a £1 million fine, uh, or millions actually, to the HMRC over a careless uh, but not deliberate error over tax issues. And the Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab has recently had to refute bullying claims for a third of his private staff. Now, it's still very early on in Sunak's premiership, but it seems similar issues to previous governments are cropping up once more. Shadow Tiles Chancellor Rebecca Reid summarised it earlier. Dominic Raab, who's being investigated for bullying, is passing judgment on Nadim Zahawi, who's just had a £1 million fine for not paying his taxes on time. That pretty much epitomises this Conservative cabinet. When the Prime Minister came into office, he said that he would run a government that would have honesty, integrity and professionalism at its heart. None of those three things are happening today. Well, don't worry, Rachel, because if you are ever in power, in fact, we should be scrutinising the Labour Party just as equally. Right, so for the Great British Debate this hour, I'm asking, do you believe that Rishi Sunak can lead his government with integrity? I'm joined now by Director of Car 26, Lois Perry, writer and broadcaster Matthew Stadlin, reality TV and commentator Narinda Carr, and also former Brexit Party MEP Belinda De Lucy. Right, so I'm going to start uh, with you, Matt Stadlin. Now, Rishi Sunak, he made his first speech as Prime Minister in October to the country. He said he'll lead with integrity. What do you think? Yeah, I think that Rishi Sunak, by comparison to Boris Johnson, hasn't done such a bad job. But I say that as someone who's left-leaning. I mean, Boris Johnson, I, I, the way I judge it is how often I feel a desperate need to tweet, Nana. When Boris yeah. Johnson was Prime Minister, <laughs> when Boris Johnson was Prime Minister, it was two, three, four, five times a day. With Rishi Sunak, it's much more infrequent. Having said that, he did, as we've heard, promise that he would pledge that he would run this country or bring accountability and integrity to number 10. And we have to judge him on how he's acted so far. In the very same breath, let us not forget, 70 or 30 years ago, breath, yeah, in, the, in the very same breath, he brought back Suella Braverman under a week after she had been forced to resign. Yeah, that, was, that, was okay. the, that was the first yeah, yeah, big mistake. Now, no, no, well, no, no, now he's not wearing a seatbelt, which is just plain daft. I mean, he gives us well, these the cheery law. selfie videos. Yeah, but it's the what law, on earth is he doing not wearing a seatbelt? Well, and then we've got questions over Nadine Zahari's Right, let's move on. I want, move on. I want to move on to um, Lois Perry. Lois Perry, what's your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, he obviously made an error of judgment, uh, which he's admitted to by not wearing the seatbelt. But I mean, the main thing he was, he was talking about levelling up and, um, you know, his levelling up seems to be printing loads of money so that he can pay for constituencies, uh, which they've not, they've got a dodgy chance of winning in the South to, uh, to actually vote for him. I mean, the only way that you can actually level up is to, um, is to cut taxes and encourage growth in the private sector because the government doesn't make money. The private sector does. But I must say, it's quite a welcome distraction, uh, for his comments about calling people who want taxes to be lowered, which includes most conservative voters, well, idiots. Yeah. Well, let's bring in, uh, let's bring in Belinda Deleuze. Uh, yeah, hi. Look, having integrity doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. I mean, come on. You know, I, I don't trust any human on this earth that sells themselves as saints and infallible. You know, we all make mistakes. The point is, he apologised. And to be quite frank, there are far more serious accusations you can throw at Rishi other than making a mistake of not wearing a seatbelt. You know, his, his pathetic, pitiful sort of five-point plan that was supposed to be in inspirational was, was bare, the bare minimum of what any prime minister should be suggesting to a country that he would do, you know, grow the economy, cut debt, cut hospital. It was, it was boring and uninspirational. I think the problem with Rishi is that he, he lacks communication skills. The less he tweets and the less he does these video clips, the better. He's only going to get but, but, things but, but wrong. And, we just want action. People would argue that. But people would argue. More of this. Well, a lot of people argued with uh, Partygate that they broke laws that they made. I mean, these are laws and he's broken the law. Narinda. Um, I think it's time to admit this Tory gov government is like a professionally run criminal organisation and how anyone can even <laughs> defend 
what is going on right now. I mean, the second fine Rishi Sunak's had, his wife was non-dom, um, he's paying money to get votes in the South. Um, he hasn't sorted out the strike process. And well, hang on, don't we, we, I don't know about the paid money to get votes in the South. I'm not sure about that. No, I don't think, well, what, what, what do you mean, broken the law? To, to, to paid votes in the South? What are you saying? When was this? When he's leveling up, how he's put so much money in the South just to buy votes in the South. It, Rishi Sunak well, has no, got no, no that, integrity. That, that, this government has got no integrity, um, Nana. This, the, the Nadim Zawawi and the tax returns are as transparent as mud. He's got away with millions. This is criminal. It's criminal. This is a criminal government. They're scum. Well, Matt's, Matt, Matt's shaking his head, Matt. No, you've got to be, no, you've got to be, really, on, you've got to be really careful when you talk about criminal behaviour. Nadim Zahawi, Nadim Zahawi has not broken the law. He seems to have paid a fine. The fine seems to have been about a million pounds. <laughs> he was, he H HMRC... I I I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not usually a defender of this Conservative <laughs> no, but I, I have to step in there. What, what, what he's done, Nadim Zahawi, is tell us that the, the HMRC agreed that it was careless, it was not deliberate. There is a difference between tax Tax evasion, which is criminal, and tax avoidance. Well, the main he thing seems to have avoided is, taxes, yeah. had to he's, pay a but fine. It's a moral, but it's, but it's, and that's not but it, good. On, that's not good. But, it, but don't call him criminal. No, he's not, it's not criminal, but, it, but it's morally, it's slightly it morally criminal. bankrupt to do that because you know it's not criminal because he hasn't broken the law. Okay. Unlike Richard Sunak, who did break the law by not wearing a seatbelt, that is a law. Yeah. Um, and Lois, Three, uh, can I just say that the main difference. Hang on, Lois is speaking. One second. Sorry, can I just say that the main difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance seems to be the amount of cash that you've got in the bank to make sure that it is legal or not legal. But having said that, um, there are, uh, Guido Fawkes actually tweeted that five years ago, um, oh, I think, no, Five years after the seatbelt law came out, that Keir Starmer was actually... He did a little video from uh, the back of a car, mm -hmm. not wearing a seatbelt as well. Well, we'll have a look into that if he yeah, did. Definitely. We'll see if we can find that, if that yeah. is the case. Can I just also say that I was talking to a Tory party donor earlier on, and he said that the way that Rishi Sunak is treating Conservative Party voters, donors, um, everybody, he said that Margaret Thatcher would literally be turning, if not rolling, in her grave. About this. Belinda Lucy. Oh my gosh, I think this is a huge storm in the in a teacup, to be quite honest. I don't think the general public are going to be panicked that suddenly we have a terrible leader because he forgot to put his seatbelt on in the back of the car. But the positive is that it's highlighted to everyone, put your seatbelt on, so that's a good thing that's come out of it. But we cannot expect our politicians not to make mistakes. And I say this about Labour and Greens and everyone else, as long as they say sorry, after mistake, we have after to mistake, have an element that. of forgiveness. You know, you had Keir Starmer in 2020 in a collision with a cyclist and he didn't stick around to talk to the police about it. That wasn't morally great. But do I condemn him we'll and humanise him for it? Narinda. No. There are far Narinda. worse Narinda. things the Narinda. Conservative Narinda. Party have done. Let's, let's get to Narinda. Narinda. Belinda, enough. You can't keep making excuse after excuse after excuse. This is the worst government in my lifetime. They get away with breaking law and still staying in power. Resign. Resign. And he well, knows it. Well, no, no, no. Matt, Matt yeah, just, just Let's very, go to Matt Stadden. Matt Stadden. Just, just very, very briefly, I think Lois would agree with me on this as well. This, in she fact, might was, not. This was her point in, in the green room. What he did, Sunak, was decide to take the seatbelt off. I don't think he forgot to take the seatbelt well, seat off. Worse. Exactly. Yeah. His, the no, number, yeah, 10 spoke, number 10 spokesman said he took it off briefly in to order to make the film. What does that say about the man's judgment? Yeah. I mean, do they, do, do, they, do they know what the laws are? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What people want from a leader is someone to lower taxes, taxes, stop the boat, be tough on crime, to stop yeah. the politicisation of our public well, well, sector. Then that's yeah. that's what our government that's... needs to focus on, not these well, tiny well, little flaws that humans make every now and again. Well, hold on a second. One second. Listen, we're running out of time. We're going to have money out of time, so I'm going to have to wrap this up. Uh, listen, I'm going to wrap this up. Zahawi, though, uh, released this statement earlier today. Two, uh, two twenty, uh, twenty-two years ago, I co-founded a company called YouGov. I'm incredibly proud of what we achieved when we sat, when we set it up. I didn't have the money or the expertise to go it alone, so I asked my father to help. In the process, he took founder shares in the business in exchange for some capital and his invaluable guidance. Following discussions with HMRC, they agreed that my father was entitled to founder shares in YouGov. Though they agreed, they disagreed about the exact allocation. They can concluded that this was a careless and not deliberate error. I chose to settle the matter and pay what they said I was due.